Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Raven, Legacy of a Master Thief. When last we left off, Constable Zelna had found this uh, radio post up in the Egyptian Museum and is about to examine this chair. This chair that will trigger a very important event in this game. Very important indeed. The chair is the only object that's not covered with dust. It seems like someone sat on it recently. Handcuffs. Not what I expected. Was someone interrogated here? Huh? Huh? Someone approaches. The Raven, if I'm not mistaken. Why don't you step into the light? Now here is your five choices. Here are your five choices. Now, if you were paying close attention to various clues in the game, and eliminating various suspects as you were going along. Or if you just took a good look there when the person appeared and recognized the shoes and the trousers, you could eliminate a few possibilities anyway. It's not the professor. We've eliminated that option. If he wanted the eye, he would never have returned it. It's also not David Kreutzer because, well, we pretty much eliminated him as the murderer. He's very unlikely to be the raven. It's absurdly unlikely to be Legrand. Legrand chasing himself and trying to capture himself. That would be pretty interesting. And as far as we know, Gebhardt is dead. Which leaves only one person. Mr. Inch. Amazing. <laughs> Truly amazing. I thought young Legrand would be my most dangerous opponent. But it seems I should have had more respect for A. Indeed. The butler did indeed do it. The butler is the one that has been doing all of these events. But how? But how? And the bomb on the train? Did you want to kill us all? I knew that Legrand would be hot on my heels after the heist in London. He would. He's a dangerous man, Mr. Zellner. He almost caught me once. Is that a reason to resort to murder? It wasn't my only reason. An eye for an eye, Constable Zellner. Oh, it seems like there is some information here we do not quite yet know. But perhaps uh, Inch will tell us. What about the murder of the Baroness? Was that also your doing? The death of the Baroness was never part of the plan. Dr. Gebhardt had a score to settle with her and got in my way. You didn't care about the key to the safe? I never wanted to steal the eye out of the safe. I always intended to strike here, in the museum. What about Gebhardt's confession? A nice idea, don't you think? It keeps the inspector out of my hair, for a few more hours at least, until everything collapses like a house of cards. Hmm. Interesting. What about the theft of the second eye? Why did you want to steal the second eye here? The eye was in the bank in Zurich for a long time, impossible to get at. Then the safe on the ship in Legrand's cabin, too complicated. I heard about the secret basement and found out how the security system worked. I would have preferred to save my performance for the gala this evening, but, well, events demanded a change of schedule. Not least because of you, my nosy friend. Oh. Well, at least we're having an impact in something. Now, if you say, how did you do it here? You completely miss the opportunity to talk about the Raven's character. How could you change so much? The Raven was a gentleman thief. The common people were on his side, not on the side of the police. They liked him because his heists were clever and, in the end, harmless. A shock, isn't it? The good Raven, the clever Raven, the harmless Raven. Nothing more than a ruthless criminal. That's what all the newspapers say. Now and for all time. But why? Why ruin your own reputation? I'm correcting things, Constable Zellner, and I enjoy it, believe me. But enough! Ooh, how did you do it, though? How did you do it? How did you plant the message on the safe in the train? How did you know that Gebhardt killed the Baroness? And the demolition charge below the treasure chamber how... how did you manage it all? Mm. Even if your arm isn't lame, 
Oh, it is, believe me. I needed help, it's true. A messenger boy to replace my arms and legs. A messenger boy? It's him! Ah, Adil. This could be interesting. He's quite talented, but unreliable. He has a mind of his own, his own plans. Don't you, Adil? I never wanted blood to be shed, but it's time to make an exception. Oh, dear. Hmm. He only forgot one thing. I keep things firmly in hand. Uh-oh. Always. End of story. Oh no, Zelda! What happened? We won't know yet. For now, we have to see the game through another perspective. This pigeon! Or not. All characters we've seen before. I told you not to get off. What if the train had gone without you? So, you're taking a job as a ship's doctor. I am excited, but nervous, too. <laughs> I'm not exactly a champion swimmer. If you wind up in the water on board a ship, something's gone terribly wrong. Now we shall find out how it all happened. Because now we know who's planning everything. And now we know who was involved. What was all that in the museum? <laughs> that didn't quite go according to plan, did it? And I hate it when things don't go according to plan. <laughs> you nearly killed them! You let them catch you! Uh, it, w it wasn't my fault! Scotland Yard was there! If I thought it was your fault, you'd already be bobbing in the River Thames with a bullet in your head. Ooh. <laughs> Someone tipped them off. I don't know who, but I'm going to find out. Where is the jewel? Ah, marvelous. Well, he got but it. It's just half the set, and stealing the second eye will be more difficult than I'd anticipated. So, we do in fact know that uh, Inch is the villain, and a deal here was in fact working with the Raven all along. So now we get to see how everything happened. We're going to get to see how they planted the letter in the train freight car, and what happened surrounding the events of the murder Baroness. All of the questions will now be answered. Let's talk about the guard in the museum. How are the injured guards doing? How the devil should I know? You didn't need to do that. What? Save your bacon? I'd have made it out on my own. Oh yes, the poor security guard. It really wasn't necessary. I'm such a naughty boy. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. Oh please, please, don't be angry with me. I won't do it again. Yeah, um... Inch is very focused on getting the uh, eyes of the Sphinx. <laughs> Hasn't the Baroness grown suspicious? She's wrapped up in a veil of alcohol, arrogance, and disinterest. Only flattery, gossip, and Belgian chocolate can penetrate it. Ideal conditions. I'll be glad to be rid of that old hag. She's my ticket to the most important museums in Europe. But these have been the longest six months of my life. So what now, Inch? And what do we do now? Why are we meeting here and not in Venice like we planned? London drew more attention than planned. They put Legrand on the case. Nicholas Legrand? He's searching the train. Should, 
shouldn't we postpone the plan under these circumstances? On the contrary, I gave him an anonymous tip. A tip? I told him that the train will be robbed. Why exactly would you do that? I don't know. We have the first eye, and we only just escaped. Tell me you're not suggesting that we should be satisfied with that. One eye alone is nothing more than an expensive bauble. But both eyes together are a legend. My greatest triumph. Shouldn't I put the eye somewhere for safekeeping? Just in case Legrand searches our things. I'll hide the jewel in the Baroness's luggage. I already know where. Legrand won't dare search her belongings. And even then, he'll never be able to open the secret compartment. Fair enough. Robbery on the train. What robbery are you talking about here, Inch? And what do we do now? You don't seriously suggest that we steal the jewel right under Legrand's nose? Of course, because I'm an idiot. Our best bet is still Cairo. Everything is prepared. Mr. X will provide us with everything we need. As planned, I'll go to Venice together with the Baroness and board the ship there. You'll do the same, but as surreptitiously as possible. All right. And under no circumstances can anyone be permitted to discover our relationship. Understood. And the rest of the plan is as before? We just have to get on board the ship. The meeting point in Venice? Then I'll get in the car and we'll meet in Venice. No, Legrand necessitates a change of plan. You'll go by train as well, and place this envelope on the safe as soon as the train halts in the tunnel. I'll cause a blackout so that you can sneak past the guard. You won't believe who's guarding the safe. That blasted Bobby from London. If you have any trouble, cave his skull in. And Legrand? You take care of the letter, I'll take care of everything else. The most important thing is that no one recognizes you on the train. And that I don't get caught. Probably ask him about the letter, I think, Adil. What's the purpose of the letter? That's not your concern. I'd just like to know whether I'm risking my life for some game of yours, or whether it's worth it. Any one of my games would be worth your life. You just do what I tell you. Stick the letter on the door of the safe, or leave it on top of it. I don't care. But the letter has to be there as soon as Legrand shows up after the blackout to make sure everything is in order. Understood? Yes. What? Yes, understood. Okay, so we'll see each other in Venice. And not sooner. Here, take your travel documents. We may not have an opportunity to meet in Venice. Okay, fine. I'm surprised no one heard... Huh. That's the first change of plan so far. Uh, whatever. Looks like I'll be going to Venice by train. Yeah. I'm surprised none of these people heard that conversation. At all. But hey, we get the cool music from the first chapter back. Hooray! Sometimes you can find useful things in a waste bin, but this one seems to have been emptied recently. We are no longer Zelna, for we do not know if Zelna in fact survived. I hope he did, but we'll never know. Let's look at the crate. The crate must have had bananas or something in it. It's empty now. Hmm. What about the kiosk? <laughs> There probably isn't a single newspaper between Moscow and Madrid that's not reporting on the burglary. I'm famous! Unfortunately, not for the sort of elegantly executed theft I'd like to be known for. Hmm. So it indeed was a deal who took the first Eye of the Sphinx. Burglary in British Museum. One casualty. 5,000 pounds damage. Culprit unknown. Return of the Raven? I'd have escaped anyway, but Inch just couldn't resist playing with dynamite. I hope the security guard recovers soon. Adil certainly seems to have the correct mindset for the old Raven. He certainly seems to be uh, thinking about not wanting to hurt anyone, whereas Inch has absolutely no concern about that. 
We can look at the uh, that man. Some of the passengers got off the train to stretch their legs, but this man started his journey right here in Zurich. He waited a good ten minutes for the train and began to get impatient. Hmm. Judging by the bag, he's a doctor. He radiates self-confidence, almost arrogance. Look at the freight car. They won't let me ride along in the freight car, not even if I ask nicely. No, they won't. As soon as I'm on the train, I need to find a way to sneak into the freight car. I have to take one thing at a time, though. Indeed. You deed you do. There is the conductor. The conductor from the train. He's keeping a watchful eye on his passengers and their luggage. The train's been held up, and he seems to want to prevent further delays. Mm. He'd see me if I tried to board the train. And you indeed cannot get past him. Hmm. I don't think I can lure him away. One of the passengers would have to ask him for something. It would be best if I could get my hands on his clothes somehow. The conductor's uniform would be the ideal disguise. Oh, it would, but we'll need to figure that out first, how to do it. This is the saloon car, fully furnished with a bar and all the niceties. The ladies and gentlemen would have a fit if I just waltzed in there wearing these clothes. Plus, they probably could just try and go in. I can't board the train like this. I'd stick out like a sore thumb, and they'd throw me off without a second thought. Yeah. I can't board... But we could look at the doctor's bag. Remember the doctor's bag went missing. Do you remember that? His bag went missing. We're gonna find out how. A leather bag like the ones used by country doctors for carrying their equipment. Hmm. If I swipe the bag, it'd cause confusion while people look for it, and I might be able to sneak onto the train. The only problem is, I can't take the bag with me. Hmm. Not a chance. The doctor could easily spot me taking his bag. He'd sound the alarm. And our Swiss friend would have no choice but to arrest me. And then we'd have a real problem. You got examined, Zelda, but I think I have a plan. <laughs> this crate might be useful. It's built out of thin wooden boards. Probably didn't have to bear much weight. Hmm. We could use the crate with the uh, doctor's bag. That could work. This wooden crate is big enough to completely conceal the bag. It'd be protected from prying eyes. And I could make my exit from the scene of the crime unnoticed. Clever. There's still one problem. Someone might see <coughs> me picking up the bag and putting it into the crate. Hmm. Is there anything around this corner? Ah, we do, however, have a few items we can examine, like the envelope. Huh. A ticket for a trip on the MS Lydia from Venice to Cairo, some banknotes, and a passport. Blank. No personal info, no picture. Hmm. We get Inch has brilliant contacts in the underworld. He knows the best counterfeiters, technicians, pickpockets, and con men. He remains anonymous, though. Most of them don't even know they're working for him. Mr. X, his contact in Cairo, probably doesn't have a clue who he is. Hmm, I wonder who Mr. X is. We also have this message. Inch loves the spotlight and has a flair for the dramatic. Why else would he call himself The Raven? I don't like having to risk my own neck as part of his drama. What's the point of leaving messages for his opponent? And lastly, before we end the video, the penknife, which we will use to remove the bottom of the crate. Huh. I can probably pry the bottom boards off without too much effort. They're thin, and the nails are short. I think they can all see you doing this, Adil. Perfect. It looks like a normal crate. And when we come back, we shall use this bottomless crate to steal the doctor's bag. I'll catch you next time, and I'll see you then. Later. The mystery shall become 
Revealed! Revealed, indeed. <laughs>